Hi, George here. And today I want to talk about using Camera Raw inside of Photoshop Elements. And before I go into depth on that, I just wanted to explain a couple of basic concepts here. Photoshop Elements and also Adobe's Photoshop program are both designed for images where you'll be doing a lot of creative work, a lot of manipulation. For instance, this image here of this stag with this glowing antlers. So here's the original image. And then all of this stuff was done inside of Photoshop Elements. Another way to look at this is going up here to the guided menu and taking a look at the fun edits, things like double exposure, duotone effects, these out of bounds effects in here, all this kind of fun stuff. This is where Photoshop Elements really shines. And the same thing with Photoshop. It really is great at doing that kind of imagery. Now, the other way to work with images is you have a good photograph and you want to make it into a great photograph. You're not going to be changing things. You're not adding things. You're not taking things away. You just want to make it a really good photograph or a really great photograph even. And for that, you need to do a lot of careful image editing where you're adjusting color values, tonal range values, things like that, color toning, grading, and getting the photograph to look the best that it possibly can be. So there's two different ways of using these programs. Now, the best way to do that is with Camera Raw, and hopefully your camera takes Camera Raw images. Now, a Camera Raw image is just the raw image data. It hasn't been processed at all. Nothing's been done to it. It's just the raw data. And there's a lot of data there, a lot of information there that you can then use to get a perfect picture. Now, if your camera takes JPEGs, the camera does a lot of processing when it converts it into the JPEG format. So you don't have as much to work with with a JPEG file. You can still do a lot, but it's not as much. It's always better to work with camera raw images where you have all of the information possible to work with that. Now, Photoshop and Photoshop Elements don't work with Camera Raw images directly. They work through what's called the Adobe Camera Raw Editor, and that's an additional editor that stands on top of the regular program. Now, some programs like Adobe's Lightroom program are native to working in Camera Raw. The whole program is in Camera Raw, so you don't have to have anything on top of it or anything else like that. Everything is directly Camera Raw, and that's why those programs are so powerful for that kind of image editing. Let's take a quick look here, open camera raw. And I have a couple of images right here. Here's a raw image. This is a Canon image. And here is a JPEG image. Let's take a look at this Canon image. I'll open this up. Here we go. And this is the camera raw editor. You can see that it's floating on top of the Photoshop Elements editor there in the background. So it's a separate tool. And in here, I can show you how much information is in this. It looks like it's really underexposed. You can't see anything. But if you go over here, just do basic, I'll take exposure. I'll put this all the way to the right. And you can see how much detail is actually in here. There's a lot of information inside this image because it's a camera raw image. I couldn't do this with a JPEG image. If all I had was that with a JPEG, I could maybe get it up to like this or something. That's as far as it would go. But with a camera raw, there's all that additional information in there and you can do anything you want with these. So you have a huge range of image information to work with in these camera raw files. Now, one thing about camera raw is you're not working with a regular image file here. This has to be converted into something else before you can do anything else with this after you've used it here. All you can do with the camera raw is to do your adjustments here inside of the camera raw editor. Now, there are two ways to save this out. One way is to take this out and put it into Photoshop Elements, and that's going to automatically convert that into a Photoshop Elements file. You can then do whatever you want there, but that's also going to be compressing it down. It's going to be losing a lot of this information as soon as you make that move. So you want to do as much editing here as you can before taking it over into Elements. You can do that by coming down here where it says Open, and you can open it or open it as a copy. Opening as a copy is always a good idea. That way, you still have your original untouched. Now, since the original is normally not touched with a Camera Raw file, if I came over here and clicked on Done, it would then take all this information here and save that as a separate file next to the Camera Raw file. I'm going to increase my blacks a little bit here. Let's just come in here and do a little bit of black work on that, just richen those up just a bit. Let's put our whites a little bit in here. And let's take a look at our highlights, bring those down a bit so you can see the sunsets a bit better in there. Just kind of balancing things out a little bit here, getting as much color as we can. Bring our vibrance up. Okay, that's looking a lot better. I'd spend more time to really finish this thing up, but this is better. And I'm now going to click on Done right here. And that has now saved that back out with the sidecar image. Let me bring that up and I'll show you that to you. Here we go again. This is my projects folder. There is the camera raw file. And here is that new sidecar file. So all those adjustments are in here. Now, when you open up a camera raw image inside of Photoshop Elements, it's going to be looking for one of these files. If it sees this file, it will then take all these settings from this and apply it over here. Now, if I want to do anything else with this, any of the more standard Photoshop Elements stuff, I have to take it over into Photoshop Elements and do that over there. Okay, let's go back over to the camera raw editor. Let's take a look at a JPEG image. 
open in camera raw we'll do that one and open there we go again this is floating on top so you can edit jpegs you can see right here jpeg you can edit jpegs just the same way that you can edit the camera raw files all the same tools are here but we'll stick with this one for discussing the different tools now looking around here there's not much at the top as you can see here all these things in here this is photoshop elements in behind so just ignore that stuff pretend it's not there like that right hand side you have a few options here's your histogram showing you the distribution of your values and colors and images are pretty even across and you can see that it's kind of a low value image because of that there's an auto setting which i normally don't use you can convert to black and white to look at it in black and white right there click black and white click again for back to color again and there are also profiles down here there are a lot of these built-in profiles what these are is all of these settings preset for you so they're presets come down here to browse and there are quite a few there's some basic ones in here color and monochrome we already saw those there's a bunch of artistic ones and to see how these look just roll your cursor over the image and you can see how that looks now i've favorited this one and that's up here in my favorites section there you can see that get back down to artistic so you roll over these find the one you like click on that and it then sets all those settings for you there are quite a few black and whites in here this by the way is the best way to convert an image to black and white is to use this editor and not the black and white tools over inside of elements here's some modern looks these have more color vibrance to them in most cases or they have more of a monotone color effect a lot of those and there's also some older fashioned vintage looks in here so as you can see real easy to come in and do this let's take one that looks pretty good we'll go here to modern let's take a look at this first one it's maybe a bit too bright too saturated but i'll use this one just for demonstration we'll click on that let's go back and go into basic we can then use that as our finish so you can see by using these profiles you can very quickly adjust your images you don't have to be bothering with any of this stuff over in here say so i wanted to do that i'll put this back here to just color that's the original go into basic and here we have our temperature and our tint these are basically two ways of adjusting your color one is blue to yellow the second one is green to magenta so they're not really different things you could call this color one and color two would make more sense but they call them temperature and tint so pull to the right it goes more yellow left goes more blue and on tint to the right goes more magenta and left goes more green i think a little bit more magenta is going to help this image just a bit just look at the flesh tones like that maybe just a little bit warmer i think those are better looking flesh tones now i'm just looking at this and make my own personal judgment on the color values in there but i think that's pretty good exposure brighter to the right and darker to the left that's pretty easy most things can use a little bit more exposure in most cases contrast more contrasty or less contrasty you also can adjust your highlight shadows blacks and whites you can use these to adjust your contrast in a more controlled manner so i normally will leave the contrast alone here and i'll jump down and bring in more or less highlights like that's pretty good and maybe a bit more on the shadows when you do this when you're adjusting your highlights shadows which are kind of your mid-tone range and then your white is clear to the top and your black is clear to the bottom and you bring these in you control these these are increasing your contrast but they're more controllable because i can do just the blacks or i can do just the whites and when you're working with these kind of controls let's look at the blacks specifically look for a dark area like right down here and you don't want to go where it begins to block up like that so you want to get down so it's just getting a good solid black in there but no further so it looks like right around in here is pretty good and you can see that up here in the histogram here's my black point this is a shadow clipping warning if the colors go too far this is going to change so i'll pull the black to the left and you can see it just goes red right there that's too far it's beginning to block up in here so i'll just back it up just a little bit and right in there is pretty good on the whites same thing if i go too far at some point i'll begin to clip on the whites actually it didn't clip at all here we looked out on that one there's not a large enough white area pure white area so i can go pretty high in the whites and i'm still okay so we'll go right about there and i think that's pretty good and then come down here this little button you can cycle between the before and after views click on that there's our before here's our after i think that's much better in different ways of looking at that there we go down here your clarity you see right there i'll go like this it's a bit more contrast again but it's a bit more of a controlled contrast it's it's boosting contrast on edges a little bit of that doesn't hurt vibrance and saturation are your colors now with the vibrance it'll be adjusting things that could use more vibrance and leaving other things alone so i pull it up here you see the colors tend to get shifted a lot in here flesh tones not so much the background colors a lot more 
So it's a very controlled way to use your, or to add in more coloration. Saturation puts the same amount of color for the whole thing, and you get much more garish effects. The way I think about this just in general is that saturation is a large rough control and vibrance is a more fine-tuned control. So it's kind of like rough or fine-tuned. And I'll normally try vibrance first and see if that does what I need. Down below that, we have detail, and this is your sharpening section. Depending upon your image, depending upon your lens, a little bit of sharpening doesn't hurt. It may actually improve the image a bit. Now, if you go too far, it begins looking really weird. And you can see that back here in the hairs. You begin to see these little hairs like that sticking around. That's a perfect example of the sharpening being taken way, way too far. So let's back that off. Normally, your sharpening should be down fairly low in here. I found that in most cases, I'll leave the radius and the detail alone, and that usually is just fine. I think that's pretty good right there. If there's any noise in the image, you can try to reduce the noise, but keep in mind that noise reduction is a softening technique. It's going to be making your image just a little bit more blurry, so you need to be going back and forth to try to balance those out. Color noise reduction, you can get some color noise in here, either from reticulation on film, which we're not using any longer, also, if you work with a JPEG image, you can sometimes have color noise happening in there. I don't see any problems with that in this one, though. I think we're okay on that. You can show or hide the effect. And that's very subtle, but it's good. And calibration just allows you to adjust the version of Camera Raw that's being worked with here. And I just leave mine at the current version, so I never actually touch that calibration. So you can see how easy it is to use this, and it gives very nice results. Much nicer, much cleaner than you get over inside of Photoshop Elements. The Camera Raw Editor can save out to a different setting. Over here to this top button right here, and you can save this out as a DNG file right there. And DNG files are the raw image just saved to a format that can be viewed by a lot of different devices and by a lot of different programs. So if you're just planning on making your adjustments and then saving it for later, I'd recommend doing it here to the DNG file format. Now, if instead you want to take this out to a print or something, or you need it as a JPEG again. Right now, again, we're not in JPEG right now. We're in the Camera Raw Editor. If you need it as a JPEG, you can come down here to open and then open this up over inside of Photoshop Elements. So we'll take a look at that in just a second. Just a few more quick things in here. There is a zoom, little zoom. You can zoom in like this. And there's a hand control down here, bottom right-hand corner. You can move things around when you're zoomed in. Also, left-hand side, you can choose several different zoom settings right down here. I'll just do fit in window. There we go. And then over here, there are a few more settings. You can do your cropping in here. You can do red eye adjustment in here and you can reset to open, reset to default, apply previous settings. And there's just a few more things up there. There's also just a few options, but not much. I don't really leave this alone. Now you can white balance an image if the image can be white balanced. Some images can't be very easily white balanced, but you can try here. If you have something in the image which should be white, which you know is white, you try using this eyedropper right here to go ahead and grab that. Like maybe the highlight right in there should be white. I'll click on that. And it actually pushed everything a bit on the green side. I don't really like that too much. I'll use Control Z to undo that. Now, if you have something which you know is a pure black or a pure white or a pure gray, you can use this to try to find that. Or you can try the auto setting, which I have had very poor luck with, or do it as shot, which is just fine. Or just leave it alone. In most cases, I won't even bother with the white balance. I just want to make it look good. So, so what's pleasing to my eye is the correct setting. One more little trick in here is if you roll over the name and just let your mouse sit there for a minute, get this little pop-up that gives you just a little bit of information about that particular tool. So here's the contrast right here. Just give it a moment and there we go. Here's a little informational pop-up. Kind of fun if you're just learning how to use these tools. Let's now take this over into Photoshop Elements. Come down and click Open. There we go, we're now inside of Photoshop Elements. And those are now RGB, 8 bits right here, and it's still the JPEG image. But it's been adjusted with those great tools over there in the Camera Raw Editor. Open a Camera Raw. So if you are working on an image which is more like this thing here, or you're putting text into your image, you're putting in frames, special effects, all that kind of stuff, do that here in the regular Photoshop Elements. If instead, you're working with a photograph and you want to make the photograph as nice looking as possible, but you're not doing anything else to it, then for those images, use the Camera Raw Editor. And again, it's up here. File, Open in Camera Raw. Now, if you need to do additional stuff in here, like I might want to come back in and lighten the teeth up, maybe make the teeth a bit whiter, things like that, or brighten the eyes up, those kind of tricks 
are best done here inside of Elements after you've done your basic adjustments there inside of the Camera Raw Editor. And then finally, once you're here, you may want to save this out again. Go up here to File, and of course, here's your Save option right here. Or if you want to print, just come right down, and your Print option is right there. Now, there's a whole lot of information here in just this one beginning video. And if you want to learn a lot more about how to use Photoshop Elements, what I recommend doing is taking a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And I'll put a link for that right down there in the description. Or just go to howtogurus.com and you'll find all my training titles over there. That's the easiest and the best way to learn any of these different programs that I talk about here on YouTube. Okay, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you next time.